We go tell Phil it's time to come in. start with our usual introductions, and uh, I'm going to start over here with the birthday boy. <laughs> I'm Wayne KK5IO. Huh? How old? 61. He said he was 21? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Peter. <laughs> At least. I think we're muted in them, Peter. <laughs> no, we heard him. We, we know him. Now, Peter, we didn't hear him. Yes. I did. Look at him. Now, Peter, I don't hear him. And make sure you speak up, too, so the microphone's here for the guys out on the uh, electronic. Look at G5P. G5P. Yeah. Hotel in Macaulay, 
I couldn't see Lee. I was like, where did that voice come from? Good morning. Yes, sir. Yay! All right. Bill, go ahead. Me? Yeah. 85 UGO Walker Mobile. Bill. <laughs> KI5 TLC Terry. Denny, WA16. Who you got with you there? That's lucky. You don't have to. <laughs> Need an antenna on that collar. There you go. Kilo Delta 5, 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 Chris, KE5, JZN. Mark, N5, HZR. I saw Larry walk in. Where'd he go? Larry. <laughs> he tried. <laughs> and I'm Galen, WX5MOR. And uh, is this everybody that we, Mark? That's everybody. Well, cool. So we've got uh, Glenn. Good morning. Good morning. WRQ. Good morning. Why have everybody? Where are the cameras at? And Peter and Paul and Chad. Dave, Al, and Karen. Good morning, everybody. We're uh, we're going to jump right into the program here in a second. After I make the uh, second poke here, uh, I know that many of you have uh, been waiting on the opportunity to pay your dues in person rather than using the online stuff. And if you want to join the program, come see Hank. He's right here. We'll wave your hand again. Yeah, come see Hank, and uh, let's get these taken care of. So, uh, Mark, uh, you want to talk to us about a program today? I will. Let me get the ducks in a row. Is that is that the section manager? That is. <laughs> D. There's only section manager. That is. That's Mark, are you doing? Are you doing this with Wayne? Oh, um, go ahead, Wayne. He's doing it. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, I'm going to do it. Hang on. I gotta do it. His name's on the slide. I got to get all of it. Yeah, our program today is all about field day, which is coming up in two weeks. And while Mark's doing his thing, I'm going to add just a hair bit to it. Um, you may remember last year uh, we did a thing. Of course, we were, some of us were here, some of us were at our homes. Um, and while I was doing mine at home, I also uh, was doing a communications drill for the Central Oklahoma Emergency Managers Association. And uh, I found out real quick that trying to do field day and do the comms drill at the same time uh, probably wasn't the best idea, uh, which I did at the time. Tried it anyway. Uh, we'll be doing that again this year. Um, probably haven't uh, nailed it down yet, but probably will run a couple of hours prior to the start of field day pops. So hopefully we'll have set up done and in that uh, lunch period waiting, uh, I think it will probably be based out of the normal command vehicle, which will be out here somewhere. Um, and I think, and by the way, I'm looking for ideas here of how to incorporate what the public safety folks do with what that's volunteering amateur just do. Uh, so I will probably be sending that email to them here this week that says, number one, go visit your local <coughs> hand club during the field day. That, that helps them, and uh, you know, we all want to meet each other beforehand anyway. Uh, it's a hand opportunity to demonstrate what it is we can do for emergency managers. And I think that probably the emphasis of it will be uh, send a message to the Moore's emergency manager and any means you can other that does not use commercial internet, which means you can't call me. Yikes. <laughs> you, know, you can't use one of these. What? So, yeah. 
What? So I haven't quite figured out how to make the, uh, the wireless carriers go down yet, but it seems like you know, we'll probably figure out a way. Don't send any messages. <laughs> anyway. I'm ready to start. Are you ready? Here go. Thank you very much, Leland. That's a great expansion for what we're doing. I am Mark Klein, and as stated before, I am your illustrious ARRL section manager. <laughs> <laughs> you got the badge? I have a badge. I actually do have a badge. That's, a, that's one of those special badges. That's the red badge. Yeah. This gets you absolutely nothing except the red badge. <laughs> they don't say, yeah, hey, oh, we got a red badge, you're a red badge. They don't give you anything, but that's a good thing. I am the ARRL section editor with that commercial hat on. That if you have any questions about the ARRL, give me a holler. I'll find them out. I mean, I'll uh, answer your questions. That should work out pretty good. So I took that role in uh, April from Kevin O'Dell, and we'll see what happens. We'll have some fun for the next couple of years. As part of that, our field day is sponsored by the ARRL every year. It's our Super Bowl. How many have gone to a field day before? Who? How many have no idea what you're talking about? Yeah. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Still in the back, he probably doesn't because he's probably right in there. <laughs> 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 oh, well, does. That's a good deal. The ARRL uh, sponsors this field day once a year. It's always the, far, the fourth full weekend in June. So if anybody asks, when is it? You know, they haven't done it before because it's always the fourth full weekend in June. This year, that's 26, 27 of 2021. Uh, our goal is to set up in a field and communicate with as many folks that are uh, on the planet. There are typically there are typically four to five thousand stations up and running, and there are typically nine thousand or so uh, home and field stations up and running. Uh, last year with COVID, they changed the rules so that you could get a lot more points for working at home, and you could work at home. Thank you, uh, there's a couple of people nodding that helped us last year. We'll see the call sign on the board. Um, so that they could help the club. This year, that same rule is in effect. So if you uh, want to work from home, you can. We'll talk about that more later. But uh, that one went up to 19,000 people that uh, headquarters had to deal with and did a lot of paperwork for and put them all in the newsletter. What is field aid? It's a great test of emergency operations. Uh, the idea is we all set up in an area that we don't normally set up, and we communicate with anybody in North America on any bands, any modes, any questions. Yes, sir? Uh, North America. Didn't they used to include South America a couple of years ago? Uh, it's, it's stated as a North America. Okay. I don't know what you did back when the spark gap transmitter was <laughs> No, I, I think it's more than that. Because it's always Canadian and uh, uh, Canadian. It's where Peter is on this. He'll tell me that the right way. <laughs> Canadian. Uh, lots of good signals on the band. Everybody comes out, everybody works, everybody's surprised. There's good propagation on those days because everybody's out, everybody's talking and doing their thing. We will use signal sideband, CW, and digital. For those of you that don't know what signal sideband is, that's the voice part where you're talking to somebody in the other area. Uh, Morse code is uh, generally passed on, on continuous wave where you're tapping the, the radio on and off. And the new digital modes have all kinds of crazy stuff where you can send call signs, names, and, and uh, sections to each place. Uh, it's a great time to come and learn new operations. So those of you that raised your hand when Galen says, who doesn't know what I'm talking about, this is a good time to come, and you'll see darn near everything in operation um, uh, from one end to the other. If you have friends that have no idea what you do, bring them as well. It's always, we're always open to guests. We love to have other people come. They can operate. We can put them in front of the mic, and they can talk, and they can have some fun doing that as well. Uh, they use the club call sign, so nothing... Nobody needs a call sign, but <coughs> hopefully we all have a call sign. Uh, CW, band, CW bands, uh, if you've never done CW, those guys are phenomenal. I see the, Kim here, and I saw uh, Bill. Bill uh, is Bill here? I saw Bill uh, Robertson. WG is here somewhere. 
those guys sit there and listen to those little beeps and boops, and they've got the easy job because all they really have to do is pick out the call sign of the other guy and pick out a couple letters and pick out a station, an area, and then they punch a button and it does all the work, right? Yeah, that's it. That's always good. Anybody can do it. Anybody can do it. So if you come out there and uh, they'll show you how to do that at some point. Digital thing, if you don't know what the digital stuff is, that's taken the world by storm. Um, you, uh, I turned the radio on just to listen, and I heard 118 countries in seven days on the on while we heard it. So that's with uh, terrible conditions that we have right now. The uh, why field day in a normal year, we put lots of radios out there, with lots of antennas out there. People build antennas. It's a great place for folks to come through, and if they've never built an antenna be part of that team. If you see something and you don't know what it is, it's a great just point at it. What's that? And you can ask questions and make that stuff happen. Uh, learn by doing. You can go out and, and uh, push the buttons and make it happen. Um, it's a great place to talk with people. Last year it wasn't because there were only 12 of us, I think, at most here. We usually have 100 and some folks that come. So this year will be a great place to talk to people. And there's always buy, sell, and swap gears. People always bring stuff. If you have something that you don't need, uh, so I'm telling Pat's not a flyer that he's trying to, uh, to get rid of a good radio at a really good price. Um, that's a good place to make <laughs> stuff like that happen. So feel free to bring that if you wish. Uh, SCARS will operate this year out of this building, this facility, um, on the 26th and 27th. And we will um, have three stations. We're going to use uh, the Moore command vehicle. We're going to use a tent. And uh, we're going to use a trailer to come back to make that all happen. We don't use the fire tower. We will use the fire tower. Yes. The CW guys will have the fire tower. They will have the trailer out there. We're going to put the CW guys all the way in the back. And we'll just bring them food every once in a while. And, and we hope they don't come mix with us. There's now. <laughs> so, uh, no, they'll be in the back part of it. I'll see, show you a map. More importantly, all of this information is at w5nlr.org slash fd. Feel that. So that's a good place to go back when you when you go. I don't know what he said. Yep. Oh, I skipped one. Thank you. No, 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 I was just going to say on the screen here, mention again. Oh, thanks. Scars pandemic version is um, that you can still work from home. If you choose to work from home, you can still um, enter all of your information when you turn in your log. You can say we're going to be part of this South Canadian ARS. That's how we have it listed. So uh, if you wish to just work at home, last year uh, Thomas Hayes did, uh, I don't know, in some context, uh, Hank did a bunch of them, uh, Victor did a bunch, Peter Moore did a bunch, lots of folks helped with that. So you can still join in from home. You can join in from home, and you can come here to the field day. You can't work this station for credit from your house. So if you're at the house and you call this station to make credit, that's not allowed. So if you would intend to come visit us and work here at this station, please don't contact us. Um, leave that one for somebody else. So uh, that's, one of the, that's one of the little tiny parts of the room is the not the little tiny. Uh, special pandemic con uh, conditions are, are what we expected. Same as what we're experiencing today. Um, if you have any symptoms, stay at home, um, but uh, we don't expect any change between now and two weeks from now. This is a map that uh, Wayne got, and I walked out the other day. Yes, the birthday boy I heard it helped put up the other day. Um, this is on, on the field day site uh, if you want to see it. We show the red digital truck that's going to be Galen's mobile command center. It's going to be parked right outside the door, outside the door here with an antenna going. West, go yes, memory. It's a T2FD twisted terminal, tilted, terminated, folded, dive to the platform. I have a question. Yeah. Is the CW tent far enough away? Uh, by the rules, that's I think as far as we can get it. <laughs> okay, just checking. Thank you. Bob and Kim, Bob's laughing, Kim's not. So I don't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, safe. See, the, the problem is those guys are real happy to be down here away from the rest of the crazy. That's the right answer. So they got the best spot. The phone and they will and they will generate most of the points. Yes. 
not a contest. It's not a contest. Oh, yeah, yeah. There we go. No, no, but they'll still generate most. Yeah, we'll still generate most of the points, even though it's not a contest. Even though they list them by points in the banks in the state of It's a contest. If you're keeping score, it's a contest. Um, the phone piece is going to be out here in a trailer that our trailer, in a tent that Gail, uh, David Grizzle has that he says that that one guy with his finger can go poof and it pops up and it does everything perfectly. I don't know what I, I, I don't know. I don't know if it'll be that good, but it's it's a, a it's close. Rodney, Rodney says he seems to like know what he's talking about. So it is close. And our good friend Larry has a five ton uh, generator, five ton air conditioner, and a 300 kilowatt generator. What is that? 10 kilowatt. 10 kilowatt. Okay. 10 kilowatt generator. It's close. It's close. 300 kilowatts. That he'll, he will run and cool that whole device and make that happen. Uh, so that will be out here. I think the current intent is to put up a DX commander. Uh, there's Mark Noddy, he's you know, Ken, we're talking about that. Ken, Ken Sanborn is driving that bus and they're going to have a, a DX commander. I don't see him here, I don't see him on the web, but Ken Sanborn's uh, running that uh, six band, I think, vertical DX commander. Um, and he'll have that up and running uh, on that phone piece. And we've, <coughs> we've got lots of room. Anybody wants to add an antenna or try something, they're working on that. Uh, Mark AZQ, A5AZQ, raise your hand, Mark. There you go. Mark will be driving the uh, digital bus and he has a uh, 991, is it? 991 a set up with uh, digital modes. And then like just like the one that's yes. being presented. Tom did steal it from you. It's still there at your house. Okay, all right, just check. Um, he's a 991A that will be running the digital stuff <laughs> and that will be out of Galen's truck. The cool thing there is got all the screens and all that stuff, so like the digital should be a lot of fun in that piece. Uh, Ken Sanborn will be down in this area in the phone, uh, running that section with his generator. So those two are both on the generator. Third one is down here at the fire training tower. This is that beautiful five or six story, um, the luxury accommodation behind us that they use to burn down every time they can. And <laughs> we, it will be, we will have access to the top. And we can drag whatever we want off of it. We have a CW cut uh, 204080 dipole that would be on that. Uh, if anybody else wants to bring something different, they're welcome to. But uh, that's what's uh, planned to go on this to hang off of this. And then uh, Larry's going to bring a 50 foot tower. Is that still available? It's not going up to 50 foot, but say 47 and a half foot, 30 foot. Well, we might need a work day on it. We might need a work day. Well, yes. Yeah. And that would be okay because the other legs will not be quite up that tall either. Yeah, the other one's so going to go on, the, on uh, <clears throat> Thomas's 20, uh, what is it, 25 foot deal. Thomas Hayes has donated his trailer. If you were at the previous building, he has a 25 foot tilt up trailer that he donated to the group. And uh, because he moved. Out. Well, he went to Colorado. It's true. He did go to Colorado. He's so he's coming back here from Colorado to do field. No, 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 no. He left us his trailer. Oh, and he cool. Monday morning will start his brand new job at a brand new engineering firm instead of the University of Oklahoma. He was the aerospace engineer for yeah. uh, OU. So he got him one of the real engineering jobs. I bet he's got a slide rule and everything. He's he's <laughs> a he's a good guy, and he was big loss to the OU Ham Club and. Only people that lost was us. He gained it's a good sale deal for him and his family. It's south of Denver, so it depends on your attitude on cold, but uh, you can figure that out. Yeah, so, uh, drive the train there. Drive the train? Yeah, he's an engineer. Oh, he's <laughs> an engineer. <laughs> um, um, did, did you know that's that there is a, a train test facility in Pueblo, which is south of Denver, that uh, they run a train at 120 miles an hour? <coughs> They run 20 to 120 miles an hour south of Denver. Wow. Here's another one for you, Wayne. I bet Peter knew all about that. Yeah, we've got a lot of training guys working on it. It was built by the, uh, oh no, you don't want the details. Never mind. No, no, stop. <laughs> don't listen to him. Stay out of this. <laughs> so that's the general lay of the land. The building we are in now it will be used uh, for other activities. 
Uh, they're listed on the on the web page, but it, uh, generally at two o'clock in the afternoon, we will do a, a, a VE test or a volunteer examiner led amateur radio testing session. Is that okay, Peter? Yes, uh, Thank we will you. Test, if you wish to take a test in advance, this would be a really good time because Peter is raising the price from zero dollars to thirty-five dollars every time you take the test, right, Peter? Yes, that's correct, because I need the money, frankly. No, 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 no. The FCC has not yet turned on their fee machine. They sh they claimed they were going to turn it on in April, and then, and then they said, no, 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 no. And Scuttlebutt was, oh, June. Well, we're running out of June, so I don't know what the deal is. If you take a test in the next week, I'm not going to promise anything by field day, but take a test the next week. There is no FCC application fee. Once they do that, it will be $35 to get a license, $35 to renew a license, uh, and $35 to upgrade a license. And you'll hear, a, you'll see a great article in the newsletter next week on why that's such even a bargain. $35. Yeah, it kind of is, actually. It really is, yeah. <clears throat> And I don't work for the FCC. I definitely don't work for Congress, so that's it. Um, any questions about this whole stuff? Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. Are you going to forego a uh, the go to station? We have not had any interest yet to show up for a go to station. Should something happen, we will be there. We will be available to make one happen. But if you a go to station is get on the air. And that's for people that are brand new licensees. If there's some folks in the room, contact Wayne um, after the deal. And uh, if there's some folks in the new room, if you have not run HF activities for, for the last two years, you are considered a new person and you can run this go to station. The idea is the, the new things have to uh, build, set up, and operate that station. So that's, that's a, a nifty thing. We thanks for that piece, but uh, we're uh, we have not had any interest. What? You uh, you were working on the out schedule. Right. right, 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 right. Thank you. The, we have not had any interest in that yet, but I'm sure there there might be some folks. So if you're new, if you're a new person, talk to Wayne, and, and he will be happy to set you up. Uh, two o'clock is our uh, our test session. Three o'clock, we're supposed to do a a Lee. Greenleaf antenna led special where we're going to build some uh, some uh, uh, twin lead. We got two options: either a twin lead J pole antenna that you can use to transmit or receive on UHF and VHF, or we've got another deal working where um, Peter Kors' son Nicholas is doing an uh, eagle project, and he wants to, us to help him build thirty. Antennas, J pole antennas, twin lead antennas for um, National Weather Service radios for 162.4. So those are options. So if you don't want to build your own, you can come solder up some money. Down. So that should be fun. That's at three o'clock after the test session, uh, probably about three. And then for the rest of the weekend, if you really want to eat solder away all you want. Um, four o'clock, our goal is to do a fox hunt where we will uh, hide a little transmitter and run around the countryside trying to find it. And that's always fun. So you bring your VHF antennas, your VHF tape measure antennas, and uh, your VHF radio, and you can chase that little fox. I will have some kits here that people can buy if they want to put one together and do the story. Do we, do we need any old tape measures? Uh, we can always use tape measures. Yeah, I've had a couple of crap out on this this week. Oh, so, yes. Yeah. Bring, bring the old tape measures. We, we, we always use them. We all, you get a good deal. We get a good deal at uh, Harbor Freight when you buy them by the credit, but, uh, but a free ones are always better. Uh, always better. Okay, this is the fire training tower that we talked about. You see at the back, you may not have seen it. The antenna is at the very top. And uh, I will tell you that Saturday morning at nine, when we start to set up, it's a very quick walk to the top. Sunday afternoon at one o'clock, it gets a lot taller because it's really hard to climb those stairs again. But make sure you uh, take everything on the road. It's not enclosed, so. It is not enclosed. So we were going to put the CW guys on top of this. Yeah, yeah so the weather, but weather could, could be an issue. Weather could be an issue. <clears throat> yeah. That's the intent. This is Oklahoma. This is Oklahoma. It could stand. 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 Stand
third one? Maybe the third. You think you got one of those fans there? I don't know. I don't I don't know what we do. We're the goal is to put just antennas up there. And now I would love to operate from there. I think it would be a lot of fun. However, after being up there last year, it's windy. It's yeah, it's so really windy that, and weather is this could be a deal. Yeah, I, I think the plan is if y'all operate out of grid with the crib, which is right where that red truck is right there. Yeah, it'll, the the plan is for the operations will be down, down on the ground. So that y'all won't have to constantly come downstairs. Correct. But if they want to, you know, Jerry up there. Uh, yeah, get no elevator. This is the building we're in, the right side of the piece. We're going to be taking, oops, taking out of the thing. Um, here is an activity log. This lists all the goodies. I guess I got to change the digital key portion of this. But um, this, is, this is the ACS, uh, the ICS logs that will show you who's in, involved, who's in charge, and who to see. We have all that stuff documented. Two uh, sign band operations. We talked a lot about this thing. Um, the goal is to use the, either the Yazoo here, or we've got a TS2000 that somebody's going to bring, or two or three other radios to bring. I think last year we went through five different radios that we hooked up there just because people wanted to try different radios. And that's a, a very easy thing to do to switch radios out. We will also have antennas and W loads. And if you want to bring your own radio and check something out, that's a good thing to do. Make that happen. CWP's uh, RG will have his radio gear out there. It's what we're still hoping. He said, God willing, the creek don't rise. Haven't had a creek come up yet, so we're good. Um, we will put a 2040 dot pole, which is what we did last time. And if you want to come out, if you're serious, if you are a CW person, you want to come out and see those guys, they'll be happy to uh, get you involved in the team. Digital operations are going to be in the war trailer up here at the front. Uh, that's the antenna we talked about. The digital operations produce all of this fun stuff. We will tie in a uh, Scar's YouTube Zoom connection. We'll see what we have for different cameras available. Probably more in this room is where it's going to happen to the internet connectivity, but uh, we'll be on the same Zoom YouTube piece. What we do is keep score. This is the contest piece. Where everybody says it's not a contest. Why are you keeping score? Last year we did 959 total contests. <laughs> For 36.88 total points. These, if you're not familiar with this little chart, this is the set of the 71 um, uh, sections for the uh, AWRL, and it's 12 in Canada. Two, four, three. Yes, 12 in Canada. And this is how AWRL splits up the areas. Oklahoma is its own section. Texas has three because there's lots of people in Texas. When you make a call or you receive a call, you have to pass two pieces of information. One is how many transmitters and what type of operation you are. We will be three transmitters because we talked about three, and we will be F Foxtrot, which means we're working out of an emergency <coughs> operation center. We say it's not a contest, but what it does is it tests our ability to communicate stuff. This is the stuff we communicate. And so it may seem trivial, but in fact, field day is about communicating between stations in the field under less than ideal conditions. So passing this kind of information is the test. And, and, we, and we score, and we test points so that we can test ourselves. So how many points did we do last year? How many did we do the year before? Are we are we still able to do operations at the same level? Can we, we increase our capabilities? Yes, and both both very good points. One, one just to repeat it, one is that this is uh, section material. It's data that we're tra transporting in a emergency situation. This could be, we need more uh, fire trucks. We need more <laughs> uh, D batteries, uh, but we're just trying to pass that. So these, one thing to commit to memory, um, is this table, if you want to be a good operator, is commit this table to uh, to memory because there's some tricky ones in here. And the one that usually gets people tripped up is LA because one section is called LA and that's Louisiana. Hey, when I, when I do my uh, VE thing, I, I've got a handout 
uh, that's available for people to print out and study beforehand that covers that exact topic. There you go. Uh, there's a, a second section called LAX, which is very obvious. I mean, I'm sure. I don't even need to continue. No, don't. It's Los Angeles. Their airport. We're not from Los Angeles. We don't know that LAX is from Los Angeles Airport. They do, but that's that's the ones to watch for. Yes, Bill. The wall that shows up on screen. Correct. When you keep this information in, it will show up what's happening. But if you're not paying attention, if the computer doesn't know the difference between LA and LAX, you have to know the difference between them. Uh, is there any others that are really, uh, I mean, there's obviously uh, Missouri's, Mississippi's, Mississippi, Montana's. I grew up in Missouri, so I get it, but um, there's a lot of M's that you can well, That's the problem, huh? Ah, show me, baby. Show me. Arkansas uh, is not AK. Correct. <laughs> that's, yes, that's a good point. That's a good Arizona. Yeah, Arizona is not AR. AR. Arkansas is AR. Alaska is AK. Arizona is AZ. They are mostly the postal abbreviations, but that breaks down in California. So yeah, California, Texas, and uh, Florida. Uh, PAC is Pacific, and that one's always tough to figure out. If they're in a small island in the Pacific, you put in PAC as a question. Well, the question my memory, how do you get into the wall? The computer, it's all computer log. There's a program called N3. F J P N3 Fox Juliet Papa. All the machines will be all the stations will have one of those set up. The, this is a this is a screenshot of N3 F J P showing which which uh sections have been worked and which haven't been worked. Rodney, we have an operator that is on the radio and then we have a logger beside them logging this information into the computer. So they work as a team to get that into the computer. That's at the Hopefully phone station. The That's <laughs> at the phone station. The CMA, I don't want to talk to another guy. They don't want to be near. Well, it's, they don't shower. So you just kind of stay away. No, that, that is, and it's two different ways. I mean, digital guys, that you don't need two either. No, you know, it's true. Digital is, is all automatic. Um, you just keep pushing the buttons, and it's no fun. It's not real amateur. No, that's not right. Uh, that's, <laughs> it's communication. <laughs> it counts. The uh, section manager said, yeah, <laughs> and this is recorded, Mark. Too late. Hopefully, I'm going to record it and make it go away. Uh, so, so yes, in the in the sideband station, which is where most of the people will filter through, there are two uh, usually two positions. And if you want to be, if you're if you're afraid to push the mic button, the you can be that opera that uh, logger, and you type stuff into the computer, and there'll be somebody to, to set you up at that piece uh, on that computer. So um, that that controls all stuff. You don't have to count. As Peter said, this is a display of that um, that program. And if you look at the difference of color, this this uh, darker shade of blue and this lighter shade of blue um, clearly indicate that we did not work Alaska. It's red right on our screens. Um, is it? They are on the yeah. uh, For instance, uh, VI is, is uh, Virgin VI. Islands. Oh, Virgin Islands, yeah. VI is Virgin Islands, PR is Puerto Rico. So the color will change as you start, they'll all be this red color and they'll flip over to, to uh, blue when, when somebody sees it. And, and Jimmy, don't worry about the abbreviations that much because typically you're going to give those or receive those when you're working. And, and that is correct. Somebody's going to say, I'm 3A or LA. And if they pause and then say X, you got to know, oops, wait a minute, there's two different LAs. Did you say LA or did you say LAX? Sometimes you can tell by their accent, but then people move. <laughs> so you're not really sure. <laughs> Sometimes you can tell by, used to be good old days, you can tell by their call sign number. So if it was a, a, a five station, that would be Louisiana. If it was a six station, that would be California. Now, you know, us old guys remember that. The new guys can take the call signs of the old place. So, you can't really tell too much. One piece that, I, that I've got later is a, a little cheap is to run qrz.com. That's what we're bringing up. CW operations is what we did last year. There's the actual trailer. Um, up here is the antenna, and it just goes away. You can't really see too much. This is a feed line going up to the east. 
This will be run on a 10K generator uh, that David has down here. Or one of seven, I think you said, right? <laughs> the, this is this is the you can see how far you are away from the firehouse, so we have it plenty far away. Uh, the goal is to make a nice big camp because if you put all the antennas right next to each other, you interfere with each other. That's not fun. Here's uh here's the W5LHG cool station, five tons of fun. And uh, you'll be running that into the station that's going to do side and stuff. So that's the nifty thing. Uh, there's the chuck wagon mobile. Phil's uh, Phil's wonderful little vehicle. That's going to be providing food. We will have food in this area. We do a lunch on Saturday. Sandwiches, real drone sandwiches. We do a, a big event at six o'clock. Our big barbecue here. So if you bring uh, if you bring side dishes and desserts, you'll be happy to know that we bring. Hot dogs, hamburgers, and uh, hot lunch. You have a statement there, Phil, our chief chef? Yeah, there's a shameless plug, okay? Uh, when, when you pay your club dues, they give me a budget, and I buy food, and you get the time you eat for free. I'll pay your dues. <laughs> <laughs> um, pay your dues, that gives him money for food. That's that's a good bribe. We, we will we provide Sandwiches and chips. That's it. If you want, and you'll stuff. like it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and drinks. Uh, chicken house and we get a whole bunch of eggs and we get the, the cheese and omelet stuff and, and uh, it's a very good deal you know, keep biscuits and gravy and all that stuff. Uh, for people who haven't been here before, the uh, Saturday night is usually spouses invited and whoever you want to bring. So, and, spouses, kids. And, and that, that applies all day, spouses, kids, uh, whatever. I actually will have this year access to a cornhole game a, I still don't figure out why they call it cornhole. I don't know what corn is, and there's no hole in the corn. Um, a cornhole game, a Connect Four game, a giant Jenga that's about this tall, 
So if we have low people around, there's going to be a lot of people that we have. Lawn darts, No lawn darts. Yeah, actually, actually, my wife did move for more yeah. to Noble. And it, yes, yes, she, she arrived and, you know, said, hey, I can get you know, lots of, um, it's, it's five minutes from the house instead of 35 minutes from the house. Do that now. Um, but we took a hundred and I think 160 boxes of stuff from the Moore School and took the, to uh, Noble. And uh, four or five of those fell off the trailer and into our shop so we could use them for uh, field life. She said, you might use these for field life. That's good news. So we'll have a bunch of little games. So if we do have little people show up, they should be something to do. The, the, oh, and, and back to that story, wives, girlfriends, uh, family are all invited for the entire piece. That's not a problem. I do suggest if you're going to bring a wife and a girlfriend, work on your schedule. <laughs> 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 It might be so that's caused problems in the past. Uh, so, <laughs> One thing I forgot. You kidding? <laughs> One thing I forgot. You have a special diet. Bring it along. You kill it, we'll grow it. <laughs> <laughs> you have a special diet. Bring it along and bring your own beverages if you wish to bring them. Uh, whatever you want to do to do that thing for us. Mr. Grizzle's got. <laughs> If there is a, a problem, if you wish not to have pork, uh, Mr. Grizzle will assist you in making sure that doesn't happen. It's going to be up for Saturday or for Friday, Sunday morning. Michelle. Hopefully, we'll have elected officials, appointed officials, and people that are trying to demonstrate uh, the value of what it is we do for our public. So, behave. So, my mother on sense is like, very good, very good sign at all. Digital network is digital. I don't know where I did, I lost it on. Digital network is uh, this is the, the setup last year that was used to show all the little signals in the bottom. And if you have not used a digital network, this is the way I learned is I didn't know nothing. I showed up and, and Bill Baker showed me how it all worked. So uh, that was kind of cool. There's CW. That's the one minute where we let uh, Bob quit the radio for a while so he didn't have to keep the key going. Um, there's his little F N3 FJP computer screen. You can see that in the background. That's the, the where you put the logs into. And there's his key. And there's his key, and there's his headphones, and his little other crap. And he's crap. That's right. That he brought it over. He brought us again his own, again his own meals. So we were good to. Uh, that kind of one minute weird. Uh, home operators last year. Uh, these are the people that, that signed up. Like there's 15. So if there's somebody slid off the bottom, sorry about that. Uh, these are the folks that worked from home last year and helped us with that. It was kind of cool. There's, you know, there's, as far as I know, there's no distance limitation on that. So, Tom, we could still get Tom's QSOs. Uh, yeah, Michigan Mike. That's a good idea. Tom, I doubt Tom's going to have an antenna up, but uh, it would be uh, embarrassing enough to get one up. He's, I don't know where he's going to live. He doesn't know if he knows where he's going to live. He starts his big job tomorrow, so, or Monday. So that he left so quick, he almost forgot his family. That's what I right. heard. Right. I think it was their choice. What was it? He could do that. He's got a set up to go work in the parks, so he might do that. But you know, something about a phone on field day. This is a great exercise for, I just, this is a great <laughs> exercise for learning how to dig out calls when there's a whole bunch of people calling you all at once. Because one of these days, we're going to have a net call up that is not a roll call. It's just going to, everybody call me. Like the DMR net. And you're going to have to figure it out. And this is great training for that. Not everything works off of a roll call. It's not all well disciplined. Even some roll calls are not well disciplined. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're calling you because you're the net, in this case, you're the station they want, but in a net, you're the net control station. Got to have that, got to have that skill to for emergency communications. That very, very good point. That's what this whole stack, next stack goes for, is that there's uh, 10 quickie things if you're doing this. I'll put this uh, on the field page so we can download it, look at it later. But um, there's two ways you can do this. You can even be the person that is sitting there calling CQ saying, I want you to talk to me, CQ field day. This is W5 in football. Or you can be the cursed person that likes to hunt and pounce. And that's the person that responds to me calling PCQ. So if I called CQ and Kim's going to answer me, it would go like this. CQ field day, CQ field day. This is W5NOR. M5OP. N5OP, this is W5NOR, copy 3A, 3F. We put this really big in front of the, the, the radio so that you don't forget it. We please copy 340, 3 Fox, Oklahoma, 3F, okay. QSL, please copy 1 Echo, Oklahoma. QSL, good luck in the contest. QRZ field day, this is W5OU field day. Now, that, what'd I say? Oh, I spent the day yesterday with Gordon. Those of you that know Gordon understand my craziness. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> we used to use W5OU as a club call sign uh, before we got W5NOR. So what you heard there was the two of us passing stuff back and forth. I'm listed as 3F. We are 3F Oklahoma. He had to copy that and write it down in his log. And he gave me one echo, Oklahoma. One E means emergency. emergency. It means he's sitting at home with a generator or a battery or wind power or he has one of his kids on a bicycle. I don't know. Something. <laughs> he's not running off the bed. One D is you're sitting at home. D means uh, sitting at home uh, in your air conditioner with your beer cooler. So one E, one D are those two different ones. One C is mobile. If you're out driving around, that's one charter. If you're uh, one B, uh, one A means you're out the park. We could run A status because we're running all outside. We're all on generator this year. Uh, one uh, one B is battery. I don't know. We we could. I didn't, didn't even think about that until we just said that out loud. We could run A. Yeah, leave. Which one? Point class using point, uh, a multiplier that's better than the other one. For what status to run? Yeah. No, the only difference is there's rules that apply each differently. So, for instance, in a normal year, uh, Mr. 1D sitting at his house can't talk to another 1D station because that's just too easy. So they have, they're only restricted to talking to uh, us. That uh, rules waived this year and last. That is correct. That yeah. rules waived. There are different rules that you can you can get things you can get different points. We will if we're in Fox or we're A, we can get points because we have an elected official, Rodney, uh, Mr. School Board President, and hopefully others that show up. If we get elected official, that gets us 100 points. If we have an emergency manager show up, that gets us 100 points. Um, what if the club president is an emergency manager? Is that a thing? Yeah, it's 100 points. Cool. It's worth well more than that, but the league only recognizes. <laughs> <laughs> Good save. Uh, yep, there's three Yep, we got a crowd. So that's, we're really blessed with all that. That's really awesome to have all that uh, involvement. Um, if we have, a, if we send out a public rela or, uh, relations release, we get 100 points. If we have a public area, that's 100 points. So uh, there's a lot of point stuff. And if you're into the rules and you think the rules are really cool, go see Wayne and he'll put you to work on something. Because, because, well, otherwise they have to see me. And I don't want that. Uh, but if, if you see Wayne, if you want to change those down, there's a lot of cool stuff to, which you can figure out. But the, I'm sorry. Oh, look at that. Yes. Yeah. Well, 
you mean, you mean, you mean, are you saying another one, not us? Is that what you're saying? That you visited? No. Last year we had the sideband station in here. We did not have it out in the tent. So that was the one. We had one out. Uh, we had uh, CW and digital were out, and that great trailer out by the. By the uh, yes, that was a place to go ahead and meet. That was uh, Larry's. Larry's uh, Lee, Lee was Lee's cottage last year. <laughs> it was like 42 degrees in there. Yeah, we had problems with getting the tent up last year because of, of the wind. And that was, but yeah, we, we chose to run the sideband station in here last year because there were only 11 of us in here in total in the whole event. We restricted the-, the, the And there was no the test session. Right, and there's no test session, there was no um, educational session, there was no uh, mini barbecue. We had, we had what, hamburgers? That we brought, yeah, hamburgers brought in from somewhere. So it was it was very restricted last year. Now, in here will be the test session, in here will be the, um, uh, the antenna building projects, and I'm guessing there will be a lot of worthless drivel discussions happening that everybody thinks is majorly important. In other words, it's hands talking to hands. Yeah, you would go out in the tent, or if you're just, if we're gonna hook you up to a dummy load to try something, yes. If you're gonna bring your own radio, we would hook you up to a dummy load in here if you're just trying to see if, it if it's working properly. If you wish to use it, we would take it out to the tent and hook it up. If you bring a radio and you wanna hang an antenna from the tower and you wanna bring your own coax, we can make that happen. We would have to shut down one of the radios at that time to, to do that. To, to, you can only have three transmitting devices. I saw a question on uh, Facebook, and the guy says, "Well, my my flex radio has six transmitters and twenty seven receivers, and and it, it can do everything, including wash the dishes. How many does that count for for field net? One, because you're transmitting only on one now." A flex can talk on sideband and it can be digital at the same time. That would be two. Now, if you're smart enough to make all that stuff happen, you're probably not doing field day with a high dollar flex radio. If you want to, we have our free club session going, but if you wanted to come down here with your own sideband, your own antenna, you can operate at your own club session. Uh, you've got to stay out of the side of the thousand foot radius. Yeah, yeah. You have to, we need a thousand foot radius um, around the place that's us, and everything else is not us. So if you go down the street a quarter mile uh, and set something up, probably don't want to bring your own or hang your own antenna anyway, then you might be interfering with two stations that close usually cause issues. But that's, yeah, that's all possible. So yeah, that's a good question on bringing your own stuff. If you shut down something else, if you want to try it. So like last year, we uh, ran, literally ran through five radios. What, what are you, did you bring one last year? No. Some of the other ones, okay. There was, every time I looked over, there was a different radio. Uh, so it's cool. But the big thing is you can either hunt and pounce or you can call CQ. And I was the CQ caller, Kim, uh, Kim was the pouncer. And no, Bill Roberson's pouncer. Oh, Bill Roberson's pouncer? Yeah, yeah I, I run. Yeah. yeah. We, those of us, you know, with any talent, yeah. uh, you will get, over time, you will get a lot more stations if you call CQ than if you go hunt and peck stuff. The guys at home are going to be hunting and pecking. The, the folks here should concentrate on calling CQ for two reasons. Number one is you don't have to mess with changing antennas, you don't have to mess with changing frequencies, you don't have to mess with radio, you just take off running. And then uh, number two is you run into uh, duplicates. So if you're sitting and calling CQ, the other guy is going to check your call sign to make sure that you and I haven't talked before. Pardon? Theoretically. Theoretically, yes. The theoretically, he's going to check. And there are some times where you put in a log that says, you know, we're a duplicate, and uh, sorry, I can't call you. Yeah, can't you? Can't you? Can't. Yes, ma'am. Last year, while I was working at home, and I noticed that uh, you know, 20 meters and 40 meters were pillars. Down to 12 and 17, it was just like a 
It says, he says, check other bands. There's a strategy to this. And the strategy is, to, is this logging program will tell you what your rate is in QSOs per hour. You set a rate that you want to meet. Like in CW, I, I don't like going below uh, 60 an hour, and I try to shoot for 100 an hour. If I start to fall below that and, and I'm, I'm calling CQ and people just aren't answering me, it's time to change bands. That's your best indicator of when to change bands is when your rates begin to fall. Right. And and the big careful thing is work bands are not allowed on the contest. So the yeah, God's run. bands. So you can't run 30, 17, or 12. Right. But yeah, that's that's the big thing. And and I know I stayed here. I got in. It was the radio was sitting there by itself, so I jumped on it like 9:30 at night, and I ran until three in the morning or four in the morning. And I was running on voice about 100 an hour. Uh, that's clipping. really good on. Yeah, this. we were. It was moving for a while there, but you can't get that. And and this, the next piece we'll talk about um, how you make, maintain that. But if you're here, you're gonna want to stay on that CQ thing. Uh, if you're that impatient guy that calls CQ three times, where's the night? Uh, calling three times. Uh, so if you're calling CQ and you're not getting any replies, keep calling is the right answer. You just, you, you got to remember, people are tuning by, they're doing other things, and they happen to catch you and they'll answer you. And then somebody else will tune by and listen. So if you keep that noise on that channel and you want to keep that stuff going, I'm sure it's the same on CW. Yeah. You just keep that transmitter going. I wait no more than five seconds, usually about three between the seats. You want to keep the channel. Yeah. You want to keep it. Right. You don't want anybody else parking on you. And if somebody else comes in to, to take your channel, that can be a bad thing. Well, so you want to call, they're showing uh, three by uh, three and then wait five seconds on voice. On yeah. CW guys are just bang. They're if, on. If, if somebody moves in on your, this is their strategy, more strategy. If somebody moves in on your frequency, and they're not calling you, ignore them. Keep calling. Then it becomes a then it becomes a, a, a contest of chicken. And pretty soon they're gonna leave. If 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 I'm calling CQ, bump bump in on me. If I'm calling CQ, it'd be CQ Field Day. This is W5 NOR. CQ Field Day, N50P, CQ Field Day. CQ Field Day, W5 NOR Field Day. CQ Field Day, N50P. CQ Field Day, W5 NOR. QRZ Field Day. Who's the case? Neither of them can hear each other, so. Here's a case station, and and you know even if you make up the fact that there's a case station out there, you keep the traffic going, yeah. and you keep the people interesting. And like Peter was saying, is that uh, Kim may be in the West Coast, I may be in the East Coast. And it, all of a sudden, the conditions pop in, propagation will change, and now all of a sudden, we hear each other. Kim did not bogart my frequency. Kim was sitting there in California doing his thing, happy long, and some dummy from the East Coast shop shows up because propagation. Now, if you decide that you can't hold the frequency anymore, work him and move. Put him in the log and move. And set up, set up, CQ on another channel, and and um, uh, that and you typically can outlast them. Typically, they're not that skilled. They'll either be, they'll either realize that this is happening. People get mad at the other guy flopping in, but it's not. It, Kim's not a jerk. It's not personal. Kim was working on his play. Well, Kim might be a jerk, but Kim, <laughs> this doesn't prove it. Sorry. Kim, Kim was happy where he was at. I was happy where I was. Conditions changed. Last year, I told a story the other day. Uh, all three of us, the, the code, the digital, and I, we were noticing propagation went from very close in to South Texas, to Florida, to Pennsylvania, New York, and then it came back in. It kept going in circles. I'd never seen that before. But it was just circling around. I made that comment. This is really stupid. And those two guys go, yeah, that's too. Now, it, it's important to know that, that if you hear somebody and, they, and they're really strong and they show up really strong, chances are they listened for about five tenths of a second, decided they didn't hear anything, the frequency's clear, so they'll use it. Those are the jerks. 
And so, so that's that. That's where then it becomes a contest to, for and, you to hold your frequency. And and usually you can hear that other guy slowly building up and it's propagation. Yes, I can start to hear Kim, and then all of a sudden we're just solid, and somebody has to give it that. Yeah. What, what is your strategy for answering CQs as opposed to calling? That's that's hunting and pouncing versus running. Running is when you're calling CQ all the time. You're, you're running the frequency. Hunt, so, hunt and pounce is when you're looking for somebody calling CQ and you're tuning across. And your rates will always be better running. I, I did last year that six hour stint. I did um, uh, two frequencies. One was really close to, to 14,300 or 14,300. And it was great because you're on those. Yeah, <laughs> I was close. I wasn't on it, but I was close. And the propagation came up, and some guy, some guy jumped up and said, "Hey, you're 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 near the you know, it's right on the edge. You're you're near the net frequency." And he, I must have known my mother, but um, <laughs> he said something about her. Um, then, <laughs> then, um, you know, you know, I look up at the screen and said, "Oh, I'm at three hundred two nine or whatever." So I, I was that, that net has been there since 1912. Didn't you know that? I do know that. However, I do know the rules are. <laughs> nobody, nobody owns a frequency. So I moved. I was blind. And then I stayed still the whole night. And, and a good net control would move the net. Well, <laughs> we know that's not that going to happen on that net. That's another that is but notice I qualified that with good net control. The uh, the a bunch of other uh, techniques you will go through those as you do them. Make sure you stay put. Stay put on a frequency uh, for when you're here. A couple of things on the NJ3 N3 FJP software. Make sure when you sit down to enter your initials. There's a way to enter the initials to do that. That lets you get credit. You know we all. Do you want to get brownie points for our mothers? And, and that gets you the brownie points for that. We can we can then go back and say, oh wait, uh, MPK did this. Um, what was this call sign? We can't, it's not a valid call sign. But Peter goes and puts the log sign, or I guess this year it's Ken, puts them up on the log of the world. Uh, make sure that you, your software matches the band slash operating mode. So if you're on 20 voice, Make sure it says 20 voice and it doesn't say 40 because the person before you was running 40 and you switched to 20. Um, and enter the call signs as they come in. So if you're listening for stuff, put the call sign in and it'll pop up with the uh, uh, with the duplicate stuff and you can not worry about collecting your data instead of doing that. QRZ.com have an extra browser open on that where you can always go look up a station if you have some problems. If you hear somebody and you can't figure out what part of the world they may be from. Asian accent. Okay, got it. I understand that call sign. And that's about it. Uh, questions? How much, Michelle? I just have two things. Some of us bring scratch paper uh, because we don't always grab that call sign the first time. Scratch paper, we just take notes, especially if you're a father. Sometimes both of you are taking scratch notes on the first time. For me, it was like, there's a piece of paper around here. So then you can take scratch paper with you. One of the things that I observed last year that was quite annoying was keep in mind the one delta stations are going to be working with their amplifiers and most of the not, not this year. Okay. Not legally. Okay. Not this year. Last year that wasn't that wasn't a rule, but this year they're limited to 100 watts or 150. Praise the Lord. So it's quite annoying. And then the third thing is sometimes for the more unskilled or the people that are really nervous, I'm, I don't want to dissuade anybody from participating on the side and trying to do both. Hunt and pack these calls to you this year. It's quite fun and quite scary. Um, and the gift is sometimes Sunday, late Sunday mornings are particularly good. So we work on our Sunday afternoons or Sunday mornings, and I don't want to take anybody from Saturday and time at different times. So, you know, if you're a little nervous and you've observed all of that, or if you just have forgotten that, get out there and get on the air. Yeah. On, on, on a phone, 
uh, <clears throat> even on, on CW, if, if there's a pile on you, the pile won't last very long because the hunt and pouncers are going to move on if they can't get you right away. But if you only get a partial call, answer with that partial call. Station ending in Papa again. Then somebody ending in Papa is going to call you. It may, may not, not be, be the same guy. May not be the same one. Now, if somebody calls you ending in Charlie, you know, no, you say, no, station ending in Papa. You don't, you don't chastise them. Just station ending in Papa, call it QRZ. You know, call again. And then usually somebody is going to answer you. That's the guy that called you. That's fine. Never call anybody with a partial call. Never call somebody with NOR. Never, never do that. You always give them the full call. Yeah. But you can answer with a partial call. Station with Charlie again. Okay. And that works. It helps you control the pile and helps work the station. Yeah. Do not come out and say, Oscar Romeo, Oscar Romeo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, don't, don't do that. Because how long you have to work. Yeah. Because if we practice, it's not longer than another room. Yes. The, yes. the other yes. secret is you no, know, once you get, again, you gotta, be, you gotta be doing this a long time, but um, you can hear the pile up. So, for instance, let me um, let me do the, uh, the, the second row, the, the Conrad row, all the way across there. I'm gonna call CQ, and all of you in Rodney's row, just that row come back with your call sign when I saw call CQ. CQ field day, this is W5NOR. AM5NOR. What'd you hear? Yeah. Yeah. A5F. Yeah, W5J ah, ah, <laughs> That's what you hear. Now, if you hear that level, you know you got a pretty mild pileup and you don't want to blaze through them. You want to mosey through them. You want to take them as they got because you've got a good audience there. They're going to keep trying. There's five or six folks. You're at a level where you can say, okay, you know, I hear five or six, I'm good. Now I'm going to call CQ and everybody come back to your call sign. And we'll see how that sounds. Does it you feel like this is Don't you find that one? Yeah, that guy, I'm not answering. <laughs> <laughs> the Norman Obama guy is not coming out. You control the speed. You control the mic. If you're calling CQ, you control it all. So if you need to go a little slower when you're exchanging, go a little slower. If people are impatient, that are responding to you, go move on to another band. Don't be nervous. And in that case, you work them as fast as you can because they're going to run. So real quick, it's going to be busy. It's going to be call signs all over the place. Use phonetics. Please. Use the correct phonetics. phonetics yes. Yeah, Use proper phonetics. phonetics. Otherwise, people not uh, say, you know, why they may say. Uh, w five normal on the radio. They may they may hear you know hey. Yeah. We have the proper phonetics and see the time. You can use N9 DUB, N9 Dirty Underpants, which is what they used for years out of Indiana. That's not a good thing. Okay, that's it. Thank you all. No. Oh, one more time. Uh, I, am, I am a Cub Scout leader. Would this be something? Oh, bless that, <laughs> would this be something that I could ask my Cub Scouts to come out to? Sure. Sure. Absolutely. So, in other words, is there an age? No. Well, I mean, uh, if they're diapers, I'm not going yeah. there. But, but if they're in Cub Scouts, I think you're fine. That's a good case. We go. And then just have them older, older Cubs. Probably not Tigers. Probably not Tigers. Probably Wolves and above. Well, Wolves is. Definitely Yeah, definitely Wolves. Um, so, um, Wolves are third grade nuts. Yeah, we'll give me eight. Yeah, eight. I don't mean, know. Eight. About eight. eight. We have an eight year old girl in the ladies' club that got that has the license. She actually got her mother to get her license. <laughs> That's <laughs> funny. Good for her. A lot of it depends on on what you're wanting to do with them. You know, any of them might be interested at least for a while. Right. Uh, some of them might be interested in operating probably the older ones or the the more Advanced, if you will. Right. I mean, I, I'm going to be here this year. So, maybe, maybe yeah. I, I have uh, 
two two things. First, if you're bringing guests, uh, remember the morning will be set up. There won't be any operation going on. And after that, it's going to be all operation. And secondly, if you uh, are bringing a group through when you're operating, or if you aren't operating, please be respectful of the people operating and keep it quiet around their area so they can hear the, uh, the pilots. You know, the purpose now is you have to, you have to kind of listen to them and, and, and figure it out. But they may be interested in watching the setup and seeing the process start once it's set up. Because if they show up in the middle of operations, it's, it's, it's pretty confusing. And so they can come out during the setup and, and, and there will be somebody around that can explain kind of what's going on. Well, especially if you're the Boy Scout. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah I, I will say that if you're a scout leader and are working in the Boy Scouts and are working on the radio merit badge, Bill Days, other than maybe the gun station, uh, the radio operating station, is probably not a time or place to have the scouts in the first context because typically they're slower and you're trying to educate them. Uh, Go to stations for. Yes, I apologize to Bill Baker because I brought some out several years, 10, 15 years ago, probably now, and uh, it slowed our operation down quite a bit. So. We still let you be president. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the penalty, right? <laughs> okay, I, let, let's wrap up the field day discussion. I do have one point I want to make. Um, as was mentioned earlier, there will probably be a lot of sitting around and, and BSing in here. Let's remember, let's operate, let's operate. This is, you know, we don't want a whole bunch of people just sitting around chatting with each other and our stations not have somebody operate. That happens a lot. So let's, uh, let's remember what we're here for, which yes, it's also for fellowship, but that the goal is to, to do operate. Uh, as uh, Mark said, Mark Bataille, or Blaine, sorry, you have your instant commander, your deputy instant commander, and this will probably be the real instant commander over here. So, what time for setup? Nine o'clock. Nine o'clock. And hopefully we'll have a safety meeting first and then the floor. Yeah, safety meeting first. That is important, by the way. I see your hand in the back. I'll get you back. Um, Nine o'clock set up. It takes a lot of people to set up. Hopefully, we get done. We have some, some sit around time, maybe have lunch. Operations start at one. They run continuous 24 hours until one o'clock on Sunday. Don't abandon them because we got to take all of it down. And the more people, the Kirk has. Anything else you want to say? No, I was just going to reiterate we need lots of bodies to set up and down. I know on Sunday a lot of people are tired. I'm interested in the things to figure out how to chair down. It's all of that schedules on the web. Schedules on the web. Leads hand somebody in back. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to see, uh, like Bill did, uh, how many people might be interested in building antennas? We've got the egg bomb antenna, and we've got also the other. This is what you call sign. Zip. This is David. He's the emergency manager. We're at, in this facility because of his good graces. Not to correct Galen, but I'm the emergency management coordinator. <laughs> Norman doesn't believe in having an emergency manager that's an emergency manager. But uh, I've been working on this room for a long time. We've got the tower finally put up. We've got three strands of cables that need to be terminated. I need to buy a weather station for it. I mean, besides from everything else that's going on, uh, if you really need to take a break, 
or some of these kids that are coming out, if you want to show them how to terminate coax, I have hands <laughs> that need to be put on. Child, Child labor. labor. <laughs> <laughs> Started or crimped? On the crimp train. Well, we get to have that tonight. Oh, uh, I, I don't know. Dominic, do you want to talk about the new EOC thing I sent out? Uh, it's not part of the field then. We'll do that later. We'll do that later. Future, future, future plan. All right, yeah, because uh, Norman's talking about building a new emergency operations center. Yeah, yeah. that's a good thing. We're talking about Yeah, I know. I said that. <laughs> they're, they're behind the uh, more progressive community to the north. <laughs> Oklahoma City. Yeah, Oklahoma City is pretty nice. Yeah, you got yeah. Yeah, yeah Oklahoma City is in a uh, 1960s bunker, so which I would love to have. All right. Um, any other questions about field day? Any comment? Any more comments from the section manager perspective? He will not be here the whole time. I will right? be here the whole time. I bet. Uh, uh, Anything further on Phil Day from the very good. Thank you, everybody. You can come and go. Yeah, it's a come and go thing. No, you gotta be here all 24 hours. Come on. Actually, it's more than 24 hours because you've got to be here to set up and you got to be here to shut down. So just expect you know come camp, that's fine too. All right, that's been our program for today. Thank you, Mark. And everybody else, too. All right, um, very quickly, Chris, you have minutes for us? We, we well, have I don't know when they would be minutes from. The uh, last one line. So understand, guys, this is the first in person meeting we've had in. A year and a half. So, you know, some of the procedural stuff, you know, we're still trying to catch up. You know, we had meetings online, but. Well, I got used to it all being published online. There you go. All right. Last month, we had 27 members present on Zoom and six through YouTube. BE report, we had eight people test, three new technicians, one new to general, one upgrade to general, and two upgrades to amateur extra. Uh, tech committee they said everything was up and working. Uh, we had announcements that this meeting would be in person, depending upon how numbers were, and apparently they were good because we're here. Uh, announcement about Phil Day being this month, and the MacNed was coming to a close once the McDonald's opened back up to 100% capacity. Uh, that I don't, I haven't gotten no, update we'll, on that. We'll talk about that soon. Okay. And then we had a program of the high altitude balloon by Dr. Hayes and his students, and the meeting ended at 11:08. Cool. Any discussion on the minutes from the last electronic meeting? Do we need to take a vote? Have we been voting on those? No, I don't think so. Okay, uh, Hank, you want to talk very quickly about finances, please? <laughs> Well, as you can expect, we haven't had a lot of expenses this year. Um, and so we've been getting our dues in. Uh, we collected a few more today, but uh, we're doing great financially. We've got the bank account is a lot higher than it was last year. So um, the detailed financial statements are on the uh, club website. So if anybody uh, wants to look at it, you can go there and you need the password and get it from Mark. Klein. I can't remember it off the top of my head, but uh, it would be uh, interesting if you uh, wanted to look at that. Uh, also, I wanted to give you a little bit of rundown on the memberships. That uh, actually this year we're ahead of the same time last year through May on membership, and um, the uh, membership dues is actually higher this time last than last year. So. Our membership has been holding up. We have a lot of new members uh, this year. I don't know the exact count, but um, that is really a good sign for the club that the membership is growing with our new members. Um, one final administrative detail, and then I'll, you can either ask me questions or email me questions, either one. 
I need some people uh, that have some change for 20s. Uh, I need, uh, if anybody's got them, I'm in desperate need of two tens, three fives, and five ones. So, you know, I think about some guys that have the money, so I'll uh, pay their dues with more than I have change for them. Hey, we got some here coming. I'm hoping some up. But anyway, if you have any questions on the financials, please let me know. But uh, they actually are published on them. The uh, club website, and anybody that looks at that has any questions, call me or email me. That's all I have. Thanks, sir. Any questions on the club finances? Okay. Um, for you new guys, uh, we generally just have a quick uh, uh, who's got new equipment? Who's got new toys? Who's got new equipment to talk about? Surely somebody's bought something new in the last uh, year and a half. Yeah. Well, I I, uh, I didn't buy it, but uh, my first radio was given to me, brand new out of a box. I'm very blessed with say, an Icon 2200 a so I'm very, very pleased. Uh, good friend of mine has been a, a, a man all his life. Uh, he's been trying to get me into it. I kept saying I can't afford it. I can't afford it. So he reached in his closet and, and gave me a, a prize that he won at one point. I've got that first for you. And then he turned around and gave me 75 feet of 400 cable. <laughs> well, yeah. 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 Anybody else? Anybody got equipment for sale? Tom, you got something for sale still, or is it gone? Thank you, sorry, so good. Yeah. Yeah, Okay. Hey, hang on a second. Hey, Peter or somebody online, can you hear Lendl in the back? Can I hear you? Yeah, can you hear me? Maybe it's the question. You got you. Just repeat it. Okay, I'll just wander back to the microphone. Got a Kingwood 742 with an extra module for fixed meter uh, mobile. And then a uh, radio shack. I think it's a Pro 106 digital scanner and a lot of accessories for both. If you're in need or want something like that, see my book. Anybody else? No equipment, no sale. Okay, at this time, I am going to uh, give the microphone back to Mark for a second for a presentation. Woo! Okay, put on my QRL section manager hat. I have. Oh, never mind. <laughs> okay. I have. A, a special award for the South Canadian Amateur Radio Society, which is our special service club award for the ARRL. What this entitles us to is all kinds of good stuff on the web um, from, uh, from the league. And what this means is we have half or more of our members that are ARRL members, and we have done a ton of good news stuff for uh, the environment. And uh, it was very easy to fill out the stuff because we do so much stuff. and. That was during the pandemic year, so it, it's an uh, amazing testament to this club to be able to uh, keep our special service club status during the uh, uh, pandemic. So I'd like to congratulate you on your wonderful accomplishments for this year, and uh, we will uh, go on forward. This is an award that comes out every two years, or eligible every two years to get it. This is our year to get it, so thank you very much. Good deal. Yes. <laughs> and we're being framed. And we're actually talking about uh, how to mount that or put it on something and have it available for build day. So when our elected and appointed officials come by, then uh, perhaps they'll, they'll see one more thing. All right. Uh, we also typically talk about operating. Anybody make cool contacts lately? Mark, you said you worked how many? Or you saw you didn't work. I heard 118 countries in seven days on 40 meters. Uh, 
Digital. Whisper. Uh, uh, digital. Uh, uh, FDA. 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 So they're all out there. Cool. Anybody else? Yeah. Uh, I'm not Several years ago, this man will look very, very quickly, very low SDR. Uh, I happen to see a few of the other ones. I uh, called W3 Fox Fox. Uh, <clears throat> I thought he was in the East Coast, perhaps somewhere. It turned out he was in California. And his name was Bud, B U D D. And he turned out to be the other inventor and founder of the Buddy Pole antenna. Uh, he's oh, 80 actually. years old, active as can be. And uh, as long as you would all know, whoever you might have purchased his antenna, he wants to thank you for it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but he's really a good guy to talk to. But you'll find him on 20 meters so occasionally. Full name is Bud B U D D, and family name is Drummond D R U M M O N D. And if you've never seen one or know what we're talking about or what Tom's talking about, it's kind of like an erector set for antennas. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty cool. Anybody else operating? Operating. Anybody cool contacts? Anybody work the last man standing uh, group the last month they were out? From got one there. I didn't try, but I've been working here, so it's kind of funny. And I worked them on these stuff when I worked. So you got cool. Anybody else? Anybody else? All right. How about some net reports? We're going to start with one. Hopefully that. Uh, that we haven't heard much about lately, Michelle. Oh. It's really hard sometimes keeping up with all those ladies' nets. We've got a lot of them. I think I do one almost every night of the week. But one of my very favorites is the um, louder. Stand up. Oh, stand up. I don't mind that camera. Um, is the uh, ladies on the air net on Tuesday nights, which is why I don't do air nets on Tuesday nights. Um, it is on the Can Okla system, so if you can't hit the Can Okla system with your handy talkie, you can also get on Echo Link. But we have a lot of fun, and we have ages. We've even had Jane, who's five, on ladies from five to eighty-five, and um, it's a fun net. It's a local net. Um, I say local, Kansas, Oklahoma. Um, some ladies from Texas get on. So we have a lot of fun. On Monday nights, I do two nets. Um, I, I, for the six meter net people, sorry, I always try to do two at the same time. The North Texas Wild ladies are on and they have an echo link mode into theirs as well. There's a HF ladies net on Wednesday nights. There's a Wild Op net on Thursday nights. So you can see we have a lot of fun. If anybody wants more information on some of those nets, how to get on them and what times they are, please just let me know. Well, you've got the mic. Tell us about the uh, activities, the trade club, the Batfish. Um, the Batfish is kind of in flux right now. Um, they are getting ready. There's a couple of things happening. And are we still streaming out to YouTube? Yeah. Okay. Um, they are, FEMA is up to the, part where they're going to make a decision on how they're going to uh, start the repairs on the batfish. There's two options on the table. One of them is to float and move the batfish back to its original position. Um, and the other one is to keep it where it's at, bring in um, concrete and dirt and, and do it from there. There's a lot of changes happening in leadership over there at the in Muskogee with the batfish, with the museum directors. Um, we may or may not have to go take down. We've got a radio wave text beam that may or may not be in the way, depending on how they're going to uh, do the repairs on it. If they're not going to move it, then we're going to leave our text beam where it's at. If they are going to move it, we have to move the, move the antenna. But we'll probably, they'll probably operate from there. Um, 
or fielding. I'm not 100% on that. A lot of it depends on the repairs. Questions? If you haven't gone to the back, you should get some plastic. It's yeah, really bad, you can you can't go in and you're limited on the grounds, but it's not just they have on the grounds. It has how many people here have been up to the Muskogee War Memorial Park? They have a lot of artifacts that are throughout the ground. They have a lot of artifacts inside the museum. They have one of the largest pieces of the USS Oklahoma there. So the club actually operates with two different um, call signs. One is WW2 SUV and the, for the sub, and one is WW2 OK. So for both of the different artifacts that are there. Oh, we're scheduled for as long as construction holds out and we either get done or don't start. The we're gonna have, you know, last year we had it in October, we'll do it again this year, the first weekend in October. Sorry, the um I think the, <laughs> the marathon again is trying to ruin our weekend, but we're we're gonna we're not changing our dates this time. We're staying the first weekend in October and then of course um ham holidays. Couple weekends after that, but we're going to go up there. Ladies helping ladies. Very good. I'm sorry, was there a question? Wait. Okay, uh, Peter, tell us about the siren net, please. We have a siren net every Saturday at noon when the members of the Central Oklahoma Emergency Management Association cities sound their warning sirens as a test. We have volunteers that go out and monitor those tests and relay that information back to the emergency manager or emergency manager management coordinator. Um, <clears throat> there is telemetry on these systems, but uh, our experience has been that the telemetry is not 100% reliable. The telemetry will indicate that everything's hunky dory uh, and our amateur radio operator who is near that siren will say, well, maybe so, but the no noise came out of the siren. Uh, so that's been good. We've been running this, I think, three years, four years, maybe. Um, we've just added a couple more observers, which is wonderful. Uh, if you're interested, we have an email address through which you can contact all the net controllers. It is siren at w5nor.org. Um, we have had just in the past couple of weeks, we've had a problem with the back end system that tracks all our data. That's what Mark is showing on the screen, or somebody's showing on the screen. Mr. Cursor is showing on the screen, uh, and it hasn't always been updating. So please don't be uh, upset if you don't see your siren's number increment. We're tr still trying to diagnose what that issue is. Um, but we do keep track of this stuff. Uh, we're trying to help the cities. Uh, by providing a, a running tally of how many times people have been to visit the siren uh, and how many times it has either failed or succeeded in its thing. And that, that just helps the Galens and the Grizzles of the world uh, direct their repairs to the different sirens as, as needed. Um, noon, weather permitting, if there's storms, they won't sound. Uh, in Norman, sometimes if there's a football game or other gathering, they won't sound either. But generally, they sound every week. Uh, I was, I was, we're not the only people in the world doing a siren net. The ears guys up in Edmond have been doing it for a year, for years and years and years. I just did find out recently, though, that uh, Edmond only tests their outdoor warning sirens once a month, and they do a net once a month. Well, we're not like those Edmund people. Don't Edmund my Norman because we do it every week. So, yeah. So, yeah. So, uh, and we're just, we're generally better than Edmund anyway. Um, yeah, uh, it, it's a good net. Uh, uh, it's it's quick as, as uh, Kim alluded to. It is a roll call net. We, we have a list of, of sirens obviously, uh, and the associated call sign, and we call those people in order. If, if you don't answer, that's okay. Uh, it's, it's an every week net, uh, and we understand if some Saturday you can't make it, that's fine. Um, yeah, so if you're interested in that and you're not currently doing it, we can, we can show you the map on the siren page there, w5nor.org slash siren. 
Uh, there are maps of Norman, Moore, uh, Noble and Newcastle. And if you live near one of the ideal thing is, is you have a siren that you know is in your neighborhood and it's right there and you can tell if it's going or not going. Uh, the, the point of this net is to identify defective sirens or operating sirens. Not that I hear sirens. Well, yes, we all hear sirens Saturday at noon, no matter pretty much where we are. Uh, but we need to know if your siren is sounding or not sounding. That's the important thing so that we can give actionable intelligence to our city partners. And on some of the sirens, whether they're rotating or not. Yes, yes. Uh, Norm, I always forget that because Norman replaced all their sirens uh, in 2011 on a bond issue, uh, and they are all... Uh, electronic. Uh, they're Whalen, I forget the model number, there's a bunch of stack of speakers with a big old amplifier on a two-way radio to set it off and all that stuff. Um, in more, where they maintain their sirens rather than letting them decay and then replacing them every few years, uh, they, they have electromechanical sirens as well that rotate. Uh, they have a they have an actual motor in them to make the noise, and that motor is geared to the housing itself, and that housing will rotate. Uh, Noble is the same way. Uh, I believe also Newcastle has electromechanicals as well, um, and, the, and you can see them. They they rotate. It's they're actually kind of cool. Cool. Thank you. Uh, understand the logistics of this. Uh, Dave, how many sirens have you got? Sixty. Sixty-seven plus one at OU. Okay, sixty-eight sirens. 68 sirens down here in Norman. There's no way that David can go out and listen to them. I've got 42 and more. There's no way I can go out and listen to them. The best I can do, even knowing where they're at and, and violating speed limits in my marked vehicle and stuff, I can only four or five maybe on, on Saturday. So I understand. You know, it, it, just, just a little there note there. Um, just a little note. If I can, if if you are a member of the net, please don't violate speed limits in your unmarked vehicle. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, siren net. You have something for us? Meet here on the siren net. Noble got a new siren at Clever Elementary, and it's on the <clears throat> south side of McGuire, right in the schoolyard. Peter, are you clear on that? Hubble is the name of the elementary school. Hubbard Elementary. Hubbard. Got it. I will add that to our list. Thank you. That's wonderful. Cool. Thank you. Uh, for the for the smaller cities, man, funding's funding's tough. I get it. It's tough for bigger cities too. Well, yeah. Okay, I just wanted to add one other thing, and, and uh, as far as when you go online, you can see the listing, and we have the different people assigned to specific sirens. The only reason we put you on that siren, you're not, you're, we're not saying that if we put you on number 10, that's the only one you can report from. You can go wherever you want to. We don't really care. But if we don't put you on the list somewhere, it doesn't prompt us to call your call sign. So if, if yeah, yeah and, and we always do a, a sweep up at the end to make sure, but I just want to make sure if like uh, we have you on the list for number 10, you're saying, well, I haven't been to that one in six years and so or three years or whatever. And, and that's okay. It doesn't mean that you're only limited to that one. Yep. So you can go wherever you want to. Just want to kind of throw that in. And yeah, the and there, there are sirens in Norman that are so far away, you'll think you're in a different state. If you want to go for a drive on a Saturday afternoon, please let us know. Cool. All right, questions on Siren Net. All right, Bill, tell us about it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, fortunately, the city of Norman hasn't defended the Siren Net. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ten meter net. Uh, I'm a little disappointed that we didn't get more KI fives here this morning. We got a bunch of them. To the repeater activity, but uh, if you haven't been on HF, if you want to get your feet wet on HF, 10 meters is a good way to do it. It doesn't take a huge antenna, it's a big powerful amplifier. So Wednesday nights, 8 p.m., 
as our 10 meter did, 28.445 of precise measurement. Just added two more net controllers, maybe. Five of us now, we can rotate it in one or two ways. Anyway, come and join us. Cool, thank you. Mark. Yeah. Pardon me, Mike, right after the mic cable because I'm going to go all the way to that. Yes, I'm going to come behind you. Who doesn't know? Ben, is that your account? Pretty much. I just forgot one day it was though. <laughs> Uh, on Tuesday night, immediately after the Aries event, on the uh, repeater frequency, we had the cops in that day come in and chew about whatever you've been planning for the day and what you've been up to and stuff. So come join us. That's on the two meter repeater. Uh, after the Aries net or at 8 30, whichever is available first. At last, I guess. Anyway. Very good, thank you. Uh, is Jim here? Who's been doing six meter? Join us Mondays, eight o'clock, six meters, fifty dot two zero zero. It's a fun one, and uh, yeah, we have a lot of fun. Don't we, Victor? All right. Very good, thank you. And uh, okay, the areas may have happened. Tuesday night, 1 800 local time on the uh, Stars Club repeater, two meter repeater. A two meter repeater. Occasionally, we'll mix it up a little bit. Uh, we might do it on Simplex. We might do it on the UHF repeater. Um, we might uh, come on and not call a roll and just let folks check in like they would on real net. There is now a preparedness and training drill for the real emergency net procedures. And what we want you to do is check out your equipment and ensure that everything is working. So in the event that it's needed in a real emergency, you've got the uh, MAC net happens each morning at nine o'clock local time, usually on the SPAR computer, VHF. The, uh, we call it the MACnet. It was started as an alternative to the face-to-face -face gathering that we used to do at McDonald's on uh, Lindsay and McGee in Norman. And when the McDonald's closed up their lobby, we started the MACnet. And it had uh, a very good attendance. We have an average of 25 check-ins daily. Uh, we do meet Monday through Saturday. We don't meet on Sunday. Um, here a couple of weeks ago, we did a little impromptu vote, and all of the participating members unanimously, they all voted <laughs> that uh, we would continue on with that. Uh, we understand that uh, the McDonald's and Mormon may or may not at some time in the future open up their lobby and the club members may uh, resume going down there in the morning for coffee and breakfast. But the MACNET participants uh, all voted to continue on the MACNET <laughs> so that's what we're going to do. And we'll do it as long as there is good participation. Um, like I said, we average about 25 on that net. Uh, the Aries net last Tuesday night, we had 39 check ins. So we have very good participation on that. The net control operators doing an outstanding job. Denny and Mike are doing the MAC net. And I have about five uh, net control operators doing the Aries net. And uh, they're all doing a great job. So come and join us. Very good. Which means that the day that you get to a Monday, all clubs in the Norman will be open. A week from Monday. A week from Monday, all lobbies for McDonald's will be open. 
We did a little impromptu check, and we did determine that if you have a good portable with a good antenna and a little bit of luck, good propagation, you can check in on that net from the lobby at McDonald's and link in the key. So if you want to go down there for breakfast, you can still do the net. <laughs> Maybe we need to put one of the J-Poles there that gets built and built. <laughs> the uh, club also has a weekly DMR net on uh, talk group 3140 every Monday night at 8.15 p.m. And it is a statewide net, uh, but we get check-ins from all over the country. Casper, uh, Wyoming is a regular, Savannah, Georgia, regular, uh, and uh, Michigan, uh, Illinois. So it's, it's amazing. But one of the things that we always try to do every week is also have a training session uh, somewhere during that, uh, uh, that net. And one of the things that I've been doing lately is trying to get people used to a real net the way it works, and that is uh, when you're checking in, give me your call sign, call sign only. They'll give you a call sign, I'll acknowledge them, go back and get the rest of their information. And that gets them used to some formality in a, in a true areas type net. So that's what we're doing on the DMR net. Very good, thank you. When this can nets, gosh, we used to have what, one? on the repeater, maybe the 10 meter net. And now, gosh, we've got nets almost every day. That's cool. Who's doing the six meter net? Don't do the six meter. Okay. Okay. Um, well, I have the mic uh, on the way up. Let me, uh, let me put my emergency manager hat back on real quick. Um, so when we have weather, we generally activate a Skywarn net. And when we do that, please observe a couple things. Number one, severe weather reports only. It's not right. She didn't, there may be somebody out there that's seeing something that needs to get in. And you're sitting there talking about, oh, well, you know, it started raining here a minute ago. And uh, you know, on and on and on. Uh, Peter, yes, I still have the, uh, the audio. Stop the, it. Stop yeah, it. I will. Uh, from <laughs> a, a, many years ago that... Uh, Somebody just started talking, and 53 seconds later, somebody finally got to report the tornado they saw on the ground. Uh, so anyway, uh, just a reminder of that. And um, good point. Yeah, did, did Scars or Peter used to have a, a CWWX announcement uh, beep that would appear during weather net operations? Peter, you want to answer that one? I don't know if you're not. I, I don't. I, the, the controller we have now <clears throat> is, is uh, billed as the just the bestest controller ever. Uh, setting all that type of stuff up is a nightmare. The macros exist. Uh, they work mostly kind of, sort of. Uh, but we have not used that in several years. But the, the repeater does support that. But that's... That's a different thing going forward. Okay, thank you. Any other nets? All right. Uh, we also have another club activity that is weekly, and I'm going to let Mark talk about that. It's uh, very weekly. I think you mean W E A K L E Y. No, it's not. weekly. Uh, we've done uh, Elmer Night for about two and a half years. Uh, last year, we've done it remotely via Zoom. Uh, this next Tuesday, the 16th of June, we will be here in this room to do Elmer Night from 6.30. What'd you say, Mike? It's the 15th. What'd that say? 6.30. Exactly, it's 15th. <laughs> the 15th. The 15th of June. 15th of June, we will do it here uh, Tuesday, 6.30 to 9. Uh, we bring in, uh, we, you bring in problems, we bring in solutions. There's usually somebody that has done everything. And uh, if you got a question, you know, Peter we bring in a radio. Uh, we've, we've had as many as 30 radios walk in one night and people brought in a radio and, and uh, said, I've got a problem. And we'll push through to, to help uh, get them work on. So 
If you have a problem concern, if you need an antenna design, it's usually a big one. I, I moved into an HOA area and my wife won't let me put anything up but a dish rag. What can I do for an antenna? And we, we come up with a solution that makes everybody happy. Uh, Mark started in that was Mark. That's Mark. Mark started with that. How many antennas you got now, Mark? 11. 11. Okay. 80 said Tuesday. So he's up with three more since Tuesday. So it's lots of fun. 6 30 to 9. That is an ongoing thing. It'll be Tuesday, 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 Tuesday. So if uh, you need something uh, uh, fixed or looked at or questions or you'd like to share some knowledge, it's a great, great time to show up here. We will also be on Zoom uh, reluctantly. I mean, not reluctantly, but it's hard to do that because typically we'll have a group in one corner and a group in another corner and a group in another corner and Zoom kind of doesn't see all the corners, but uh, we, will, we will carry on with Zoom and YouTube as we have uh, and support our remote users from Michigan, Indiana, Texas, lots of folks in Yeah, mm -hmm. and we got Don, Don Meyer and then he's, there's another guy that found us on the web, so he comes in all the time. So maybe maybe Colorado now. Colorado from Thomas Hayes, we might get to Colorado. So yeah, lots of, we can do work all states in one night. The cool thing there is if you've got a problem with your radio and you're at your home station, you can stay at your home station and do stuff like transmit. And know Mark, we did a appeal on his where he was trying to transmit and there were 10 people that were trying to listen to him and we could hear it. So one of us or two of us could hear it and you can take out stuff through that lot. So the online helps a lot too. Thank you. Very good. All right, we're uh, winding down here. I'm going to hobble over here. Oh. Ed, you have a technical committee or trustee? Is that well, yeah. everything up and running well. Very good. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else have anything for the good of the club? I have hats for sale. Rodney has hats for sale on club merchandise, right? Peter, do you have a report on the smile or hang? Uh, we continue to just rake in the bucks on that. I, I don't, uh, I didn't think I'd be reporting on that, so I don't have it. At, up uh, our smile number was it was triple digits last month uh i shouldn't say month I, I believe it's a quarterly disbursement on those um they seem to have rejiggered the affiliates program we have some affiliates links or whatever they call it now associates uh if you look at the the ve page uh there's some books that are linked there uh and we'll get a cut of that it looks like for a long time, if you clicked on that and didn't buy the book but bought something else, we get a cut of that too. They stopped doing that. They may have started that again because we got a disbursement uh, from that program as well. It, we just, it's free money. It more than pays for coffee <laughs> at meetings. Um, it's really quite remarkable. Okay. I think we're uh, up to you, 200 bucks mind? for the year, I think. Well, your mic's turned on. Quick VE report. We have. Uh, we had a test session on the third, I think. Mark can put up the thing there. Is is the gentleman that passed his test here today? QEC? I think that's his call sign, yeah. KI5 QEC. Anyway, uh, yeah, we had two candidates. One was successful, got his technician license. I'm sure he'll be back uh, at some point to get an upgrade. But uh, yeah, we had, a, we had a good session. The next one is on July 1. Um, same place. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the uh, FCC has not turned on their uh, their fee machine yet. So for the time being, yeah, there he is, KF5 QEC. Um, they haven't turned on their fee machine yet, even though they said they were going to turn it on in April. I don't, I don't know. Uh, so for the time being, uh, you know, if you want that vanity call, get it now before they put the $35 application fee in. Uh, likewise, if you want to upgrade, now's the time. We, oh, you know, I said July 1st, we have a, we have a field day test session. Field day, you may have heard of it. I don't know, some of you, uh, fourth full weekend in June. On the Saturday, we will be having a test session 
uh, in the room at Fire Station 7. I don't know if any of you know how to get to Fire Station 7, but they have a big training room there. Uh, and we're going to have the, uh, the test session right there in that room at 1400 hours local time. Uh, please sign up online and we will get you taken care of. Opportune time to get an upgrade to general, say. So, yeah, that's it. That's all I got. Peter, I found the email you sent it. $133.46 this last disbursement from Amazon Smile. And for the year, the total is $270.06. Yeah, so so and we're not halfway through the year and we've made over 250 bucks from Amazon. So mm -hmm. keep clicking. Thank you for clicking. Uh, but that's that's substantial. I mean, that's that's the equivalent of 10 memberships. Uh, I, that's remarkable to me. And, and yet Jeff Bezos doesn't even notice that money leaving his pocket. Not a chance. His wife. All right. Uh, so, probably not his wife either. Let's, uh, let's conclude the meeting unless somebody else has something. I don't uh, uh, one other thing, uh, on the screen there, you can see, uh, I have a handout for the section abbreviations for logging purposes. If you're on the world's worst uh, social media system, except for all the other ones, uh, Facebook, I posted it there the other day. If you'd like a copy, send me an email. I'm happy to send you a PDF, print it out, uh, study it so that you can log stuff correctly and you know some of the little idiosyncrasies. That's all I have over and out. Very good, anybody else on the net? Uh, Glenn, Chad, Dave, Al, Karen, anybody else? Don't see anything? Thank you, everybody, for coming. Let's see you at field day. Let's see you at Elma night. And by the way, if you haven't paid your dues, thanks. We're still right here. Uh, did you say you had, you had a link to? Uh, it's said uh, yeah, it's called yes it, it, just, just send me an email oh, here, me put up yeah. when, when you have some i'll do it today no problem i'll send you i'll send you this really i'll send you the, the facebook uh, post for it i really no no not facebook i don't do any facebook i don't do i'm uh, not facebook i mean i mean i'll email. send you the email Great. link Great. where you can get that good. 73 is everyone y'all have a good day stay safe I don't know if I can get over my Saturday. Yeah, I'm trying to get cables out of the way so people don't trip.